Good morning. It's a very gentle light. So softly coming. Gently light, softly coming. But it will become very powerful, very bright. We're having mid 30s Celsius. So we're feeling the heat comparatively to the long, cold winter. And that's beautiful. Each season. transitions from dark to day, from night to day, from dark to, to bright. And each of us is going through our own transitions. We go from place to place, from the womb to the cradle. And eventually out into the big wide world. From the kindergarten, from the home to the kindergarten. From the kindergarten to the primary school, many more children, rougher play, bigger challenges, learning to read and to write. And then high school with a whole new level. And the university, not to mention that, wow, and the workforce. And starting family and raising kids and seeing them go off to college. And members of the family passing on to eternal life. And that day is drawing closer for me. Transitions. So many transitions. Some are more violent and some are more gentle. Transitions for humanity. Oops, sorry about that people. Hold on there, hold your horses. Instead of using the controls, I just moved around with my hand now and it's faster. Today, Isaiah calls out, Behold, I make all things new. A transition. A transition that actually took a long time to, on our standards, 
a long time to complete. I wonder where this stick belonged originally. I wonder if it would make a nice walking oh, stick. That's a little bit heavy. It's up to my shoulder. I just put it over here on the side. Maybe it's good for somebody, maybe. I don't know, living on a farm, you always found a second use for things that had a, a first use that was over. At least it could be firewood. <laughs> we had a, a range in our kitchen for cooking and for keeping the place warm. In the winter time, we cover up the, the coals at night time with ashes so that it was easy to get it going again in the morning. So as tranquil as life can be, then there are sometimes big upsets. And Jesus teaching in the temple and they bring along a woman and they're accusing her of having been caught in grave sin. And proclaiming the law, the law of Moses that she needed to be stoned to death. That's a pretty abrupt, transi abrupt transition for her. For humanity, it's also a transition. A very important transition is happening in this story. And we oftentimes have to still learn that transition that was offered to us 2,000 years ago. and requires a transition in our own hearts to accomplish a transition for humanity here. And everyone counts. Everyone can be part of this transition. Maybe we have a hard time dealing with this today because we've come through well, you could say the last 32 and 22, 54 years since 1968, which is a big marker in the attitudes of our world to sexuality. And already there was a lot of thought in the Old Testament and the Hebrew Scriptures about this topic. And even to such a point that God himself would use this transgression as an image of the fidelity of his people. of his chosen people that he was preparing. These ones are going to open up now as the sun comes out. It's hard for us after all the bombarding of messages about sexuality in the last 50 plus years. So that means basically everybody, because this affected 50 years ago, it affected kids who were teenagers, who were in college. 
the whole Woodstock thing. And maybe prior to that, there was a lot of stuff going on as well, but it was kept under the carpet, then it kind of went public and became paraded and became boasted about. Became justified in many different ways. The person's integrity is an amazing gift to us and an amazing treasure to develop and maintain our integrity of body and soul, integrity of relationships. We love that word, a person of integrity. And we have problems with people who are not people of integrity. There's something that there's a misfit and there's something destructive of relationship. Hi, Moshe. Long time no see. Yeah. How are you doing? Really good. Yeah. Uh, the seasons are changing. Yeah, now I'll start the season again. Nice transitions. That was Moshe, the kid we used to see last summer very much in the early mornings. Transitions for humanity to discover that wild savagery is not the best path. The time, the, the time, the generations it takes to educate humanity, for humanity to grow. Some things have happened very quickly in an accelerated fashion, the technological developments. But the first steps to get the wheel right at the beginning, to assemble wheels to make a cart, until we get animals hooked up to them, and then millennia, millennia before we get motors with a different type of power, fuel. And then once we get to a certain point, then it seems to accelerate every day faster. But the moral education of the human being is a very slow process. And of society. And then there's great clarity brought with the Ten Commandments that not necessarily live by, but they're there and they're markers. And little by little, a people is formed that appreciates them. And makes them great standards, and then is ready to apply them and to apply the punishments for them that are very severe. And so this lady in that context is found transgressing a major commandment. And these commandments, we have to also understand, we have done that before a number of times in the last few months, about how the commandments are for our good. They're words of life. They're words of protection of our integrity, of who we are, of our deepest identity. And transgressing them is really very harmful. It's very destructive of our person, destructive of our relationships. If people are always lying, then a society can't sustain itself there. If people are always stealing. It's really a jungle at that point. The one with the smartest wits and the, and the biggest offenses can get away with it. But that's not a healthy society. And also in sexuality, which is such an incredible gift, one of the greatest gifts that God has given. The gift of human relationships, of a man and a woman, getting to know each other, and being called to that unity, which is a foretaste of heaven. And that original harmony was deeply damaged and who is free from the damage, the fallout of that. And here we have then the awareness of the damage sin does combined with the very rigorous application of the law. 
brought to one extreme point calling for the death of this woman by stoning. Jesus, what do you say about this? But actually in this whole case, there's another problem revealed and that is, who is able to judge? Who knows the circumstances? Who knows the history of each criminal in prison? We know a momentary crime, which could be horrendous and terrible. We have no idea what that person suffered as a child, what conditionings impacted their lives, what ill treatment they endured. And to give judgment is a very, a very serious matter. We are somehow not only transgress in bodily matters of sexuality, but also in spiritual matters. And we can reach great levels of pride and judgmentalism. And it's wonderful how, how Jesus in this gradual encounter and transition and appropriate questions not only lets the woman discover God's mercy and redemption, but actually also opens the door for redemption for those who judge. Because they also receive a major gift and grace at this moment. They start walking away in front of that question, beginning with the oldest because they realize that they also need mercy. And that's what God is all about. He's about opening up a new path, a new path in the desert, a new path through mountains, a new path across the waters for his people to go free. Because God is a God of redemption. And that's why St. Paul's letter to the Philippians today, that text is so marvelous. I leave everything from the past behind. He didn't keep negatively pondering all the evil he did. He had this great trust in God's mercy. God has forgiven me. Like Matthew, the tax collector, God has forgiven me. And it takes humility to accept forgiveness, which also implies a confession of, of guilt to be forgiven, to own up to fault. There's so much goodness in this, and it's gentle. They come with violent intentions in their hearts, in their strategy, they want to bring down Jesus. They're not so much worried about that woman at all. That's not her, their concern. They're much more worried about taking out Jesus. And in all of this, Jesus is so serene and so wonderfully guiding. And he guides our flight all the way. Gives a big turn in a new direction. And he opens up a path between the mountains. and through the forests and across the water masses. New beginnings, new life. I leave all that's behind and I thrust forward, I strive forward, gaining the treasure that is Christ. They wanted to slay the woman, but he wants to save. 
not a slayer, a savior. People, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Bring good news to people. We have a God who loves us, who wants to redeem us. God bless you.